Number 45. The active ingredient formed by aspirin in the body is salicyclic acid, which is C6H4OHCO2H. The carboxyl group, which is the CO2H, acts as a weak acid. The phenol group, so that's the OH group bound to the aromatic ring, also acts as an acid, but it's a much weaker acid. List in order of descending concentration all of the ionic and molecular species present in a 0.001 molar aqueous solution of the salicylic acid C6H4OHCO2H. Okie dokie. So the first thing is, is that we have to basically write an equation that just shows that the salicylic acid is in an aqueous solution. And remember, aqueous just means in water. So we know that this is going to be reacting with water, plus H2L. So that's the first thing that I'm going to write. So I'm going to say C6H4OHCO2H, right? Whoop. And this is plus H2O. And they said that it was a weak acid, so it's going to be at equilibrium. Remember, only strong acids and strong bases disassociate 100%, so you'll only write one arrow. But for just weak acids and weak bases, uh, they will be at equilibrium. So now we have two options, right? They said that the carboxyl group acts as a weak acid, and this is the H that's going to be removed, right? Remember, acids love to donate their hydrogens. So this would be the acidic hydrogen that will be donated to the H2O. So if that's the case, C6H4OHCO2 would now not have the H, that's gone. And if we strip away the H, we add a negative charge, plus the water gains this hydrogen. So instead of H2O, it would be H3O+. Plus. Now, all ions are always in aqueous if we need to write that out. doesn't really matter for this a question. Water, remember, is always a liquid. And your weak acids or weak bases, if they're in aqueous solution, those are going to be aqueous as well. I mean, it did say it's an aqueous solution, so it's got to be AQ. Okay, so now, let's see. We want in order of decreasing concentration. So that means that we're going to start with... Um, we'll say a lot of concentration all the way down to a low amount, right? So we're going to say high concentration, and I'll just put high C-O-N-C just for short, and then we have low C-O-N-C, low concentration. So just know that high concentration means that you have a lot of it. Low concentration just means that you have a little. T-T-L-E. Okay. So, whoa, what's going on there? Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> anyway, okay, cool. So let's start with the easy ones, right? Usually you could always pick off the one that's at the, 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 the high value and the low value, right? So looks like we're in an aqueous solution, right? We're surrounded by water. Water is the solvent. So if water is acting as the solvent, I'm only adding such a small amount of that salicylic acid into the solvent. So out of these four, the water has to be the predominant one. So I know that water has to be all the way over here. And since we're talking about concentration, I will put these in brackets. So there you go. That's a check for that one. And maybe we'll say, okay, we'll check that off. And just so that I have a little bit of room, actually, I have space up here, so I could do it up there. Now, a little is basically the thing that, you know, we have a little bit amount of, right? But whenever we write H3O+, plus, remember, this is acid and bases, right? So remember that formula, Kw equals the concentration of H3O+, plus. it's the same as H+, plus, but since we made H3O+, plus, I will write H3O+, plus, times OH-. 
any time that you have a concentration of H3O+, plus, you will secretly have a concentration of OH-. minus. So in here, star it up. Even though it's not in this equation, you still have a little bit of OH-. minus Because if you do have H3O+, plus, you will have OH-. minus. They're complements of each other, acid and base. But the acid components way predominate over the basic components. So the one that you have very, very, very little of is the OH minus. I mean, it's not even in the equation, but it's still there. So that one gets checked off. Now we have three to go. The next one we're going to do is which one is second to, you know, having a lot of. Now, they did say that salicylic acid was a weak acid. Now, remember, weak acids do not dissociate, just like we said earlier. This is not a 100% dissociation. And it turns out that when it does try to break off, when these hydrogens try to go to the water, right, not a lot of them do. A lot of the salicylic acid will still remain in its original form, much more so than the two ions that it produced. So since weak acids or weak bases will always end with basically what you started with at equilibrium, not a lot has been chipped off. That means that this guy has to be next. So this is the actual salicylic acid. Okay. So that checks off this one. Now let's just talk about these two. Well, these were the two ions that were produced, and they didn't say that we started off with any of these. All they said was we start off with 0.01 molarity of the salicylic acid. So initially, we started off with zero of this and zero of this. And going by the mole ratio, you got to be fair, right? Whatever you increase by this anion, you got to increase by the H3O plus. It's a one-to-one -one relationship, especially if you started off with none and none. So the increase between the two of them would be exactly the same. So these two ions are equal in concentration to each other. And it turns out that they would be less than what you started with, but they would be more than the OH minus. So they would be somewhere in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to maybe put this a little bit over here. I'm going to squeeze this over here. doesn't matter which one I uh, use first. So let's see. We'll do, I got to close this up. I guess we'll do that one first. C6, H4, OH, um, CO2, right? And then we have H3O plus. Okay. But now there's a catch, right? Because they also said that the phenyl group also acts as an acid, but is a much weaker acid. So there is a possibility that that OH, when they talk about the OH, that's this one over here. There's a possibility that this hydrogen will be removed instead of this hydrogen. So I'm just going to write that up top here. If that's the case, we have a new product, that's C6H4OCO2H, and that's aqueous. But then the same idea happens. I still produce H3O+. But now since there's two pathways for H3O+, you have more H3O+. You have two H3O+, and just only one of these. But if this wasn't there then we would just say that these were equal to each other. But now since we know that you have two chances of making H3O+, the H3O+, has to be more than this. So the H3O+, is going to be stuck right in there. Okay. Now the last thing is, is we just have to figure out where does this one go? Well, they did say that that one acts as an acid, but it's a much weaker acid. So if you're a weaker acid here, you're not going to be very high on this, uh, this ranking system here. You're going to be almost 
very, very low because the chances of this being removed as a hydrogen versus this one is very unlikely. So the one that now I have to squeeze in here somehow, oh man, this is gonna get a little crazy. I could do it though, there we go. Maybe if I make this a little smaller, this was a negative. Okay, so let's see. And then I have C6H4O CO2H. And then there we go. Now we have all the species and we just have to put our less than signs. So actually in this case, it would be greater than, right? High to low. So H2O would be more than your salicylic acid, which would be more than H3O plus, which would be more than this, which would be more than this. And then finally, which would be more than OH minus. And we are done. Whew. This one was crazy, but I really hope that this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you all have a great day. Let's keep studying hard, and I will see you all in later lessons. Okie dokie, bye-bye.